Let's make some things very clear. We stand on the part of Team Singapore and think that it's generally a good thing if people get to eat food. What we disagree with is that social economic rights are the right way to do this. Right from the beginning of this debate, we said we want an elected legislative to pass laws like housing bills that give people houses, food bills that give people food. We don't want people fighting for this in courts because judges are unelected and it's done without the consent of the majority. So we've told Kelly in Canada that this is better than their model in practice and that in principle, our means are far more easily justifiable. Which leads me very nicely to my two points of contention. First, can we do this in principle? No. Second, will this practically benefit society? No. First point, can we do this in principle? Right from the beginning of this debate, we've stood up and told you that no one has the ability to take away your hard-earned property without your consent. And that's why we stand against unelected judges doing this because the majority has refused to consent to having their property Sorry. taken away. But Team Canada first came up and told us that, no, no, this is a human thing. You, know, you shouldn't be able to vote away someone's right to it because it's based on our humanity. Then we asked them, if you really believe that social economic rights are given to you based on your humanity, then why don't you stand for international transfer of funds? They said, oh, because you know, states have privileges towards the citizens. Precisely, rights come from the social contract. And the social contract is created through majority consent. To have a right in your constitution that violates majority consent when the majority has never voted on whether they wanted to give housing to the poor or not and then force them to give it to them violates this precise social contract. Sure. So on the first level, we think in principle, Team Canada cannot stand. The next thing he told us was, oh, but you guys stand for political rights, like negative rights as well. This costs people sure. things too. How is this different? We've had a few responses. Let me just repeat them and add a few layers to them. The first response is that negative rights protect all of us. The police don't protect the poor person more than the rich people. So the state takes some of my property away in taxes, but gives sure. me back protections in the form of negative rights. When you take away your rights in taxes for social economic rights, you don't give these people back anything because social economic sure. rights only apply to a few people in society who need these things. This is precisely what Canada has considered in their model about means-tested welfare. Then Team Canada told us that, no, 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 but rich people have exploited the poor. How can you principally allow them to keep the ill-gotten gains? And we take great offense with this. Yes, many rich people exploit the poor to become where they are, but that's why we have laws to, like, you know, throw them in jail. If a person still stands outside on the street and is free, that presumes that he hasn't broken any laws in building his fortune. Steve Jobs is a billionaire. Did he mind control all of us into buying his iPhones? No, we bought it off our own free will because the guy's pretty smart and thinks sure. a pretty good phone. No, to somehow say that rich people are evil just because they are rich precisely underlines the sort of communist principles we think Team Canada have been standing for throughout this entire debate. Come on guys, we thought we were the Asians here. So the next argument they brought up was this strange final analysis about some sort of uh, individual necessity. They told us that countries like America will then begin to vote away the right for free speech for black people. We think we don't think this is the case. We think that most countries around the world, generally speaking, are nice towards minorities in their nation. But if the entire majority of a country detests the minorities so much that they're willing to vote away all their rights, how are your courts going to do anything? Do you think Hitler would have stopped killing Jews just because the court told him this is a really bad thing to do so? No. So even in the worst case scenario, neither side of the house gets to do anything. At least we base our sure. majority scenario on the democratic principle that is decided by a majority consent, not Team Canada's principle that lets judges take away your property. Because let's make something very clear here. It's not just rich people who pay taxes. It's people like you and me, you know, whose dad goes out to work really hard to bring back food for the family, who sure. works in the factory hours a day in order to raise your children at home. And then the government comes in and takes away his money in taxes. Sure. At least with negative rights, they can say, we are using the police and courts to protect you. But with the sort of social economic rights Team Canada stands for, they're literally taking away my property to give it to someone sure. else. Now, it might be a good thing for me to give my money to someone else, but it's clearly not a legal obligation or Team Canada would stand for international transferring of charity. So no, we don't believe the state has the ability to rob you without your consent because that's what social economic rights really stand for. Okay, next point of contention about practical effectiveness in society. Before I go on to this contention, yes, 
how does a poor man working to support his family not benefit from universal health care, food, water, housing, and all these services? Because these services that you talk about apply to really poor people in society. I'm talking about people in the middle class who can support themselves, don't need state sure. help, but still aren't the super rich who, you, who are the only people you think are going to be affected by your taxes. No, everyone's going to be affected by your taxes. And that brings me very nicely to my second point of contention on the practical effects this has on society. Because contrary to what Team Canada talked about, we actually stood up in our first speaker and said, come on guys, this is really bad for long-term progress. He gave you the example of Margaret Thatcher, who had to violate a few people's rights in order to bring general progress to the rest of society. She made thousands of people unemployed when she broke the strikes in the winter of discontent. But this was for the good of everyone else in Britain who could progress economically. No thank you. Their Teams Canada would refuse to let this happen because these made these rights a given. We think this is a terrible thing because sometimes for long-term progress, the needs of a few must be sacrificed for the rights of the many. Sorry. They haven't responded to this point. The next thing we told you in our first speaker was that the sort of social economic rights you are talking about don't actually stay at that same basic level. And we think Team Canada implicitly concede to this when they tell us that courts have the ability mm -hmm. to interpret these rights in what ways they see fit. Why? Because as John, you know, to adapt the word of John Maynard Keynes, rights are kind of sticky downwards. It's really easy for a court to expand rights, to say everyone deserves more rights. But it's really hard for a court to limit rights and say everyone deserves less rights. Firstly, because judges are human beings too and don't like to be by everyone else in society, and secondly, because you know, people, it's much easier to define an expansion of rights in terms of legal principles than a, a diminishing of rights. So we think, generally speaking, as brought up my first and second speaker, no thank you, sir, the sort of rights Team Canada is talking about is eventually going to expand to a point where we're not just talking about basic rights anymore. We met Benjamin Kim and told you how rights to free education sure. have been abused into discussion about free tertiary education. We think that societies cannot handle this opportunity cost. That's on the first level. Secondly, if you really wanted to give people these rights, why don't we just do it through the parliament and save excessive legal fees? Before I go on to my next rebuttal, yes ma'am. Would you let the majority, if they really wanted to, vote away individuals' right to speech and right to all the expenses that protect individuals' Madam, rights? Madam, if you had heard me earlier in my case, I told you that this is a really bad thing, but your side does nothing to solve this either because courts can't stop genocidical maniacs from being genocidical when everyone else in society supports them. So even in this worst case scenario, they're both equally as bad. There's no difference in our side of the house. But the final argument they raised was this point about corporations. They said, this protects individuals, not corporations, because now individuals can fight back. We don't think so. We think anything Anything done through the judiciary inherently protects, as Team Canada has said, the minority. But which minority do judiciaries usually protect? Do they protect the poor and disenfranchised who can't hire the best lawyers? Or do they protect the richest and powerful who has to have the best lawyers and the best legal experts? Let's just use the United States of America for an example. The corporations recently won a case in the Supreme Court known as Citizens United that will allow them to you know, give as much money to political parties as they want, even though this was opposed by the vast majority of Americans. Why? Precisely because courts are unelected and don't have to care about the needs of the majority. Judges are swayed by the best arguments. The best arguments tend to come from the most highly paid lawyers and these lawyers tend to work for corporations. Contrast this to our side of the house where we believe in a democracy. A democracy that is responsive because people don't forget like Team Canada suggests them to. If the government doesn't feed you in between elections, you vote them out at the next one. So because we've shown you that Team Canada's model is principally unjustified and practically unsound, go with Team Singapore.